I've been sent to spread the message. Mmm, God bless Texas. Y'all know we're heading to the south when I start off by saying, y'all, want something a little more regionally specific? Okay, y'all, I just parked my truck outside of Whataburger on I-35, and this guy with a Beto shirt walked by singing my favorite Willie song, and then out of nowhere, a thunderstorm rolled in, the temperature dropped by 20 degrees, and then by the time I got home to do this video, it was back into the 90s. Yep, that's right, folks. Today, we're heading to Texas. You might have seen some of our other videos where we guide you around a city and tell you what it's like to live there. Well, buckle up, cowboy, because today we're doing the same for Texas. And the Lone Star State is a hell of a lot bigger than any little old city. In fact, Texas is bigger than many countries combined. So get out your Copenhagen, your ratty old cowboy's jersey, and pack your heat as we unbox the state of Texas. Let's begin with some Texas stereotypes, some of which are true and some of which are not. To start, things really are bigger here. Food portions, trucks, boobs, hair, houses, and the number of miles you'll drive in a day. Food is serious business around these parts. Texans have a genetic predisposition to love Tex-Mex. For y'all who don't know, this is sort of like Mexican food, but with a whole lot more cheese. Texans don't F around with their barbecue, breakfast tacos, big bowl of margaritas, and of course, everyone here loves eating all things fried at the state fair. Not everyone owns a gun, but some people certainly do. People really do say y'all. It's just more efficient. People are just plain friendly here. And when you're going down the street and somebody waves, they don't want anything from you. They're just being nice. And of course, Texans are very independently minded. After all, if you recall, Texas was once its own nation. Now, what it's like to live in Texas today is largely based on the state's history. In 1519, Spanish conquistadors founded Texas, which means they basically stole land from Native Americans who'd been living there for thousands of years. Between 1519 and 1865, all or parts of Texas were claimed by six different countries, hence the name Six Flags. Now, during that time, there were a whole bunch of settlers and missionaries coming in from Spain. Then when Mexico gained its independence from Spain in 1821, Mexican Texas was part of a new nation. After Mexico's leader Santa Ana started shifting politically to the right, people in Mexican Texas wanted to revolt. Thus, the Texas Revolution in 1835. Oh yeah, Texas won. That's when Texas declared itself an independent nation, the Republic of Texas. One thing led to another, there was a civil war in there, and over the next century, Texas gained wealth, not from agriculture, but from its plentiful oil and service-oriented society. Segregation ended in the 60s, and between that time and now, Texas went from a solidly democratic state to a nearly solidly republic state. These days, Texas has both the second largest population and the second biggest GDP, just behind California. Now, this brings us to What's it like to actually live in this giant, economically booming, Republican-leaning state? That's a tricky thing to answer, because as you might have gathered, Texas is big. You've got your big cities, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, Austin, Fort Worth, and El Paso to start. And each of these largest cities has a decidedly different culture. For instance, Houston. It's Texas's biggest city, both in population and area and is mostly known around here as the muggiest, most industrial, and most museum-filled city. That is, unless you live here, of course. Locals know that Houston is so big that it has its own little subcultures, just like Texas itself. There's the wealthy, older conservatives, wealthy, younger conservatives, not-so-wealthy, middle-aged conservatives. Okay, so overall, Houston's pretty conservative. But there's pockets of liberals and hippies and hipsters and all kinds of people in this city. And of course, highways. Lots and lots of highways. Geographically, Houston's located in East Texas, just inland of the Gulf of Mexico. That means not only does Houston get hot like the rest of Texas, but it also gets muggy as all hell. So good thing there's the gorgeous beach of Galveston nearby. Galveston, oh Galveston. Now let's stop by San Antonio. Remember the Alamo? Yeah, that's in San Antonio, but there's a whole lot more going on here too. This city is just about an hour and a half outside the state capital, and it's home to a huge Hispanic population. 
But while San Antonio's population is 63% Hispanic, there's huge pockets of the city where the population's predominantly white or predominantly black. Yes, that's right, folks. Legal segregation may have dissolved in the 20th century, but still today, many Texas cities are largely divided in terms of race and socioeconomic privilege. Unlike Houston, which is a large international and somewhat more business focused, San Antonio's culture has maintained more of the rough and readiness. I mean, this is the place where the Battle of the Alamo was fought. San Antonio is a city of tacos, margaritas, and shooting your guns. Its streets are clogged with giant trucks. Spurs fans will straight up kill you if you insult their team. And if you don't speak Spanglish, you might as well just tell people you're just in town visiting the Riverwalk because clearly you're not from San Antonio. I speak Spanglish. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Hey! You're gonna need a car to get around San Antonio. In fact, you pretty much have to have a car if you live anywhere in Texas. Everything is so damn spread out. And no, Texans don't ride around on horses, but some of them do wear cowboy hats and boots. Lots of them, actually. Sometimes even at football games. Football's a religion unto itself for most folks in Texas. They're passionate about the University of Texas, the Texans, and of course, the damn cowboys. Plus, high school football here is huge. Now, if you're jonesing for a city with a little less good old boy Jane Osequa, don't worry. Texas has got you covered with Austin, the capital of Texas, known as the little blue dot in a red state, meaning Austin's just about as liberal as cities come. Sure, Austin's got its gun-toting, right-wing leaning taco eaters, because everyone in Texas has a diet consisting largely of tacos. But mostly, Austin's known as a music lover's paradise, with live music every night of the week. It's a haven for hippies and hipsters. Austin's a relatively young city, home to several universities, and of course, home to some of the fittest and attractive people in the country. If that sounds good to you, you're not alone. Austin's one of the fastest growing cities in the country, with its growing tech industry, plentiful nightlife, and outdoorsiness. But do remember, even though Austin is feeling increasingly like Los Angeles in some ways, it is still in Texas. Now, speaking of quintessential Texas, let's head over to Dallas. Have you ever seen the show Dallas? All big blonde hair, big boobs, and big accents? Yeah, that's still pretty accurate. Dallas is sort of like the wealthy, more conservative, yuppie, older sister of Austin. Where Austin wears flip-flops and a t-shirt and smokes pot all day, Dallas is probably wearing Tony Burch and Chanel and vaping pot. And it's not just a stereotype, Dallas is wealthy. In fact, it's second only to New York City in its population of billionaire denizens, especially when you consider suburbs like Frisco and Plano. In Dallas, you'll find designer shops, exquisite cuisine, country clubs, and mansions. But of course, not everyone's rolling in the dough in this city. In fact, it's also known for its industry and support of farmers and agriculture. And let's not forget about DFW, one of the largest international airports around. And speaking of DFW, there's Fort Worth, a big city right next door to Dallas. Residents here tend to be a little of everything. There's a young crowd, since there's a university there called TCU. It's also home to artists, musicians, and hippies. It's got conservatives, cowboys, and cowgirls. Speaking of cowboys and cowgirls, shouldn't we just call them cow people? All right, cow people, let's mosey on to the next big old city we're gonna cover in Texas, El Paso. Now, if you're not from Texas, you might've heard about El Paso lately as the hometown of Texas Senate nominee Beto O'Rourke. O'Rourke talked a lot about his hometown, but what's this place actually like? Well, it's nestled just next to the Rio Grande River, the border between Texas and Mexico. As such, it has a large population of Hispanic residents, and many residents speak primarily Spanish. Now, we have to bring up the border wall. As you can see on this chart, when El Paso beefed up its southern border barrier in 1993, and then again in 2008, crime in El Paso went down. Did you know President Trump is trying to build a big border wall? Yes, Mappy, we knew that. Thanks for doing your homework once again. El Paso's mostly dry, as in climate. There's plenty of bars and venues. But when it rains here, it pours. Like, for real, flash flood type rain. This can be dangerous, but Texans are pretty well versed in intense sudden storms and know how to handle themselves. What's even more dangerous in Texas? No, not tornadoes, but they have those. Not rattlesnakes, they got those too. Or even incredibly poisonous scorpions, yeah, they have those. No, what's most dangerous in Texas is actually crime. 
It's not that Texas has a higher crime rate than anywhere else in the country. However, if you plan to travel or live in places like Belmede, Donna, Humble, or Texarkana, you better be packing. Those places are dangerous. So is anywhere near the Mexican border. Of course, Texas is so big, and there's many, many other medium-sized cities and smaller towns, from safe to crime-filled, from rich to poor. They're as varied as the stars in the Texas night sky. Texans are a very unique bunch. It's pickup trucks galore here. It's breakfast tacos, lunchtime tacos, and supper tacos. It's a very diverse place. In fact, the second most diverse state in America. But Texas will all come together with a big ol' Southern F you to anyone who messes with Texas. Because at the heart of it, whether you're a liberal or conservative, from a small town or big city, if you're from Texas, that sense of pride, independence, and downright stubbornness is just plain in your blood. It's welcoming and friendly, yet independent and prideful. It's slow-paced and old-fashioned, yet cosmopolitan and international. It's old and new. It's rich and poor. It's desert and forests. Hell, it's oceans and mountains. Love it or hate it, it's Texas, a state unlike any other. Y'all come back now, you hear? Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just like this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America. Peace.